Today we're going to be speaking about different kinds of more advanced lizards uh, that you guys could keep um, and then just a little bit about them, kind of uh, uh, what makes them advanced, what makes them easier to keep, what makes them harder to keep, um, just some basic guidelines, some, uh, some three lizards that we have here. So we're going to do the Basilisk um, Jesus Christ lizard, then we're going to do the Green Iguana and we're going to do an Acumonitor. So I hope you guys enjoy. Alright, so the first guy I thought we would speak about is our Acumonitor. Um, these guys are really cool. It's a monitor lizard, just like uh, uh, yeah, in South Africa we call them monitor lizards, and in the Afrikaans people call them Lagavans. Um, a Lagavan is, a, is also a monitor lizard, it's basically a, a water monitor. Um, um, but yeah, Afrikaans people have their own name for it. I'm sure so does each other culture and language. So yeah, this is our Acumonitor, and um, she is a little bit wild as a female. Um, we got her about two months ago, maybe three months ago, and she has never been handled. She's also wasn't kept very um, correctly. She wasn't kept correctly, so unfortunately, she had some health issues when she came to us. But now she's much more healthier, uh, much more chilled, and actually one of my most favorite animals we have here right now. I wanted to sell her um, when we got her, but not anymore, unfortunately. I think I will keep her now, or fortunately, I'll keep her for myself. So yeah, just to show you guys there, look at that long tongue, like all monitors, very cool. Also have the Jacobson organ, just like the snake, uh, like I told you guys in our previous videos when it came to the Parthens. Um, so yeah, this girl comes from, uh, uh, sorry, they come from Australia, and um, I almost said America. They come from Australia, and they are sub-Saharan, really, really cool. Um, live on insects and probably small animals, I'm sure, if they could... Uh, get something like that so these guys do not get very big I'm sure this is probably the smallest monitor in the world they get probably about double the size and um, so also really really nice and um, not too big won't scratch you up because I know if you do get bigger monitors like these two meter long um, croc monitors and stuff like that those guys will scratch you up and you're not gonna have fun and um, you're not gonna have fun with them so yeah no, she's just looking for a place to to hide now and get away from me um, not not too used to being handled yet. We're still trying to do it. Um, okay, so basic guidelines when it comes to the guys. What do you guys need? You need calcium. You need UVB, and you need a heat light. No heat, no heat mats, no heat pads. Um, they will burn on them. They do get used to the temperature. This is how you cook a frog. You put in cold water and you start heating it up slowly because it's cold blooded. It doesn't recognize the the temperature is getting higher, and then eventually you have a cooked animal. Um, so no heat pads for lizards. Snakes are much better. They can uh, realize that that's they. That's, it's kind of I don't know. It's just a little bit different with with snakes. They work better on heat pads instead of lights. And um, you can probably give them lights as well. But uh, we work with heat pads when it comes to the snakes and also on a thermostat. Um, but yeah, these guys we do with lights and that's basically it. So look at these beautiful little colors. And um, they also have different names. I think they also call them spiny tailed. Uh, monitor and that is for the fact that the tails are spiny so because of this because they're so small they would go into a small crevice something like that and they would hide there from predators and then the, just this spiny tail would be sticking out basically something similar to 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 this she doesn't want to really hide away she just wants to see the view so then the predator would have to try and munch on this thick spiny tail and it's quite spiny um, and you can see how they would use this as the the self defense. So, and also these guys have brilliant eyesight. I wonder if you can see those little pretty eyes. Brilliant, brilliant eyesight. They really see everything. Also have eardrums, not like snakes. They do hear very well, and uh, have really long nails for climbing and holding onto things to trees and stuff like that. 
Okay, when it comes to monitors, what you want to do is you want to get them a nice big enclosure. So probably about, for a monitor this size, I would say about 1.2 meters, 1.5 meters. As they get full, full grown about to an adult size. Um, this one is about juvenile now. She's, she can probably go another year still and then she should be an adult. And then we'll try and breed her. But uh, yeah, you're gonna need you're gonna need a you are gonna need a big enclosure. And then as they get older, you can probably put them in a two meter long enclosure, and they will use all the space. Believe you me, they will use all of it. And um, when it comes to getting these guys tamed, don't just put your hand in the enclosure and pick them up because that's not how they get tamed. Uh, they would they would uh, you would rather try and train them and get them to you with some food. It's not the best thing to do, but it's a start, and because if they every time they see you, then they they kind of associate you with food, which is a good thing in any way. But I would rather try and build its trust. So maybe sit in a bathtub with it and uh, let it know that you're the only way out. So uh, not full of water, empty bathtub. Put the monitor on the one side of the bathtub. You sit on the other side, and then wait for the monitor to come to you because they they very curious. They will come eventually, and then you can basically. Um, get him a little bit more tamer or her whichever the case may be so also remember guys you guys do get a lot of different kind of monitors and um, these just these are just one of them is Aki uh, yeah in South Africa we have Bosch monitors and we have rock monitors and uh, we have a bunch of different uh, prettier prettier monitors and uh, also some croc monitors that people have available here and we, there's actually a few kinds of different species of monitors that are available in and around South Africa um, that have been bred before and also <laughs> she, she's trying to climb my head uh, she's actually getting really cute that's why we don't want to sell her so let's get her on top there there we go girl can you see the world here yeah, she can all right so where was I okay yeah cool so lots of monitors so when you do buy a monitor really Google is your friend do a lot of research um, I will do a video just on her. It'll, it probably won't be a very long video. I'll show you guys what we're doing with her enclosure, her lights, and all her that that kind of stuff. What we're gonna do with her. Um, but yeah, these guys are really, really amazing animals. And if you do like lizards and you think that you are a little bit more advanced, you can keep something a little bit more advanced than a bearded dragon or crest gecko or something like that. Then you can definitely look at something like this. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. All right, the next guy we're going to speak about is a, a green iguana. So green iguanas are really, really cool, and I think it's, it's been one of the iconic lizards in the pet trade for years and years and years. Um, if you want to see some really cool iguanas, go and check out Tom Crutchfield's uh, page on Facebook. He has a, a huge variety of different iguanas, rhino iguanas. Uh, different different mutations of green iguanas really cool uh, some crimson some albinos uh, he has his own line of albinos uh, they call the crutchfield line very very nice and then you also see how to look after them properly um, in that case so yeah the, this female i think it's a female we must just make sure but this little girl um, is getting much better and she's also getting used to being handled we will get an older one at a later stage and we're gonna do a care video on them um, because we do have some exciting news about premises wires and stuff like that but we'll do that as soon as we get there and uh, some just a little bit of surprises and some of the stuff we want to do um, with our park and uh, with our pet shop and with our breeding facility so we're gonna be dividing everything up okay but that's some stuff for a different video um, so yeah this girl's in the blue she is going to shed and um, iguanas are really cool because they are basically they they eat veg uh, and fruit and stuff like that so you guys if you not into feeding insects or meat and stuff like that and especially animals that do eat meat they they their feces really stink uh, it's got a really nasty smell to it i don't know if any of you have bearded dragons feed just your bearded dragon a pinky or uh, some meat or something and after it went to the bathroom that whole cage smelled so bad that you thought about selling your bearded dragon and uh, and getting rid of the cage not even cleaning it that's how bad it was because they really do stink so when it comes to um, people that are a little bit more finicky with stuff like that these guys are definitely okay because they eat the veg um, some bad points about these guys not really bad points uh, some people have made them out to be really 
um, aggressive animals because they can get really aggressive. If these guys aren't brought up properly, they can bite you and really put you in a bad position. Um, they do get extremely large. Like I say, this is still a baby. This guy was hatched in, uh, I think, the beginning of this year. She was hatched at the beginning of this year, and uh, but they do get extremely large. They would probably get about uh, 60 centimeters without the tail. This tail just gets even bigger and bigger and longer. Um, so about 60 centimeters, let's say your iguana will probably be about 1.2 meters with tail. Could even be bigger. Um, they have really sharp uh, serrated teeth, bunch of them in their mouth. And when they do bite you, if you irritate them or you didn't raise them properly, and they will bite you and they'll hold on and they'll start spinning like a crocodile and they'll just rip a piece of meat off or maybe a finger or who knows we've actually we, i used to have a friend that got bit on the name on, on his ankle and uh, the piece of the gash that was in there was in his foot was actually scared me a bit they don't want me I didn't want to play with iguanas anymore, but you get over it. You do get over it because you realize that if you train these animals properly and you do give them the sufficient attention and love, they will become really nice animals, really good animals. So these guys also have really good sight. Um, they can see predators coming far away. Um, when it does come to iguanas, just check in your region if you're allowed to keep them because um, these guys get invasive like this especially on your coastal areas like Durban uh, Cape Town places like that I don't even know if you're allowed to keep them there I'm sure you could but maybe some permits would be necessary to have but yeah in the free state we can keep them no problem because if they do get out it gets too cold yeah they will die within the first winter of escaping uh, from the enclosures so no permits needed for them just need to make sure that they're all nice locked up have a nice outside enclosure, a lot of sun, a lot of red lights, and a lot of calcium, which will help them. Okay, so basically what you need for these guys when they're small like this, a basic snake enclosure is perfect. Uh, glass doors on the front, nice ventilation, heat lamps, same like the Aki. Uh, heat lamps, UVB, and calcium, and then no heat pads if you don't like. And then, okay, you can feed them a, a wide variety of veg and fruits and um, stuff like that. You, you also get kind of like a, it's like a, a pill for them a, 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 or, a, or a, like a top, it's almost like dog food for iguanas. But yeah, they, they're really colorful. I'll actually show you guys a packet of it now, now before we end this video. Um, so yeah, they they pretty easy to look after, like water a lot. When these guys get older, you can put a leash on them and you can go and swim with them in your pool or uh, I'd rather not do it in your pool, a lot of chlorine and chemicals and stuff like that. Maybe if you have a river close by, you can do with your leash and... Uh, let it go and swim in the river and just make sure you have the leash otherwise you'll probably never see it again so they do get really nice like i said very intelligent animals like all these lizards lizards are really to me lizards in reptile sense are one of the most intelligent animals when it comes to reptiles uh, expect also the big snakes like the lyrics and stuff also very clever um, you kind of see their personality then you realize there's something more than just a, a behavioral instinct it's more it's more they thinking um but yeah Really, really cool animals. Um, these guys are not too expensive. They go around anywhere from around 800 bucks to 1,800 rand, just depending where you buy them and depending who you, who's the breeder, where you get them from. Uh, you get different color mutations of these guys. You even get blue ones, really cool. Uh, we'll probably get, be getting some blue ones in uh, soon, hopefully, and then maybe some adults for the park, and uh, I'm sure that'll be really cool. So yeah, that was him, and I hope you guys enjoyed her. Sorry. All right, the next lizard we're going to do is pretty famous. Uh, he's also got a pretty famous name. It's the Jesus Christ lizard, or the Basculus lizard. Um, this guy is extremely wild. They do not like being picked up. You can get them really tame. Also, same story, same as the monitor lizard. But look how stunning these guys are. I just don't want him to jump off. Uh, he might hurt himself. But yeah, always ready to run, always ready for action. Really long tails. Okay, this guy is probably about a year old in June. And yeah, they do get a nice long fin, big nice uh, horn on top of their head, and then they get a nice fin all the way down to the base of their tail. Um, it's, it's actually starting to grow if you can see it, I don't know. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, who knows. But uh, they do get really, really cool. Do not like being handled, like I said, or this one doesn't. I have seen really tame ones. Um, so yes, the reason why they have the name Jesus Christ Lizard is because they run on water. Uh, you see those long legs, those long feet? So those are basically start uh, 
stamping in the water or start standing on the water and because of the the break of the water surface this would create bubbles and the bubbles would basically support this thing's weight and uh, and then he would be able to run right across a swimming pool if i had one and it would be one of the coolest things to ever see in person i'm sure we would really like to try this one day uh, with him so yeah we are looking for a female for this guy a little bit later though really really cool guys uh, also they eat insects so what you're going to need for them is a really nice humid cage so we have this cage for ours uh, he seems to enjoy this one it's a lava varium we built a while back we want to actually put a small waterfall in it at the back over there um, so we will do that as soon as we start sorting out what we're going to do with uh, the shop and and all the stuff we're busy doing um, yeah, insects we feed them dubia roaches turkish roaches and even hissa roaches if he if he does want to take them uh, he doesn't eat that much we feed them every single day um, but yeah, they, he's very healthy, nice and fat. You can see that. Very nice and fat, very healthy. And really, just can't wait to run. I see he's, he's busy and he's waiting for it. Okay, these guys have really good eyesight. And like all lizards, they have ears. So they can hear. Tails can fall off. They don't grow back, unfortunately. Just like the iguana and just like the... They do grow back a little bit, but not so much that you could actually notice a full tail coming back. Maybe just a centimeter or two of that tail would be visible, visible again after them uh, losing it. So they will lose it from things like predators or lots of different reasons, but they could lose it. Um, I know a lot of people have said that they don't, they can't lose their tail, but I have seen these guys uh, snap and lose their tails all in a few seconds. Okay, so what do you need when it comes to these guys? You need an uh, enclosure, high humidity. I know, I just said that now. You need an enclosure with high humidity. You need uh, a lot of basking spaces. So we basically have a nice piece of wood over here. Um, I'd actually like to show you guys a little bit closer to in this uh, in this vivarium. We have a nice piece of wood, so all we need now is a dome light and a nice basking spot with a UVB light. They need that for sun and then calcium. And <laughs> So he's, he's now trying to be cute. So they need all those those things, same things that all the other guys as need as well. Um, but when it comes to these guys, I think it's a little bit, <laughs> it's a little bit harder to keep them um, healthy and alive um, because of the high humidity requirements. And also um, if the temperature drops too low, that they could get sick. So because of the high humidity and the, the, the temperature that might drop, you know, they, they can get sick really quickly and then die. You know, it's, it's a, um, a respiratory infection is a, is a really lethal thing in reptiles. Not just these, but snakes and, uh, and geckos and everything, all, all reptile related. Even, even, uh, even tortoises can get IR if you uh, leave them in a place where it's too humid and too cold. Um, so yeah, so this is what we have for our more advanced lizard species and uh, Basilisk is really, I think, one of the the top the top lizards to keep if you are more experienced. Very re rewarding. Also, just like a monitor, you can train them, put them in the bath, let them be curious, let them run a while, or run it around over you. It might take a while, but they will get there. And um, we have been working with this guy for about uh, three months now, maybe two months, three months. But he has become much better when I when we got him. Uh, he wouldn't even sit close to the glass. He would be hiding behind his water bowl because we gave him a huge water bowl in the first enclosure. Was in. So now he's getting much better. He would come to the glass if we try and feed him and getting there. So we can't wait for him to get that nice huge green basculus fin and that nice horn on top of his head. And then he will be really, really complete, complete. And then we'll be able to look for a girlfriend for him. Maybe try and produce some of these guys. So yeah really really cool you do get different types of one you get the brown basculus as well and uh, and then these are the green basculus really really cool animals look at those beautiful eyes okay. all right uh do hope you guys enjoyed that video and as always uh please like and subscribe if you guys do enjoy our content and then please uh let us know if you guys would like to see anything else uh, sorry we've been so busy, it's been crazy, uh, we've been renovating and we've been uh, trying to get our things ready for something we might be doing soon, uh, but yeah, everything will be video recorded as soon as we make some decisions and uh, 
have a little bit more time on our, on our hands. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy and have a lovely day.